This is your call to action. Get prepared, America. Economy, survival, energy, disasters. This is USAprepares.com. Informative radio, educational radio. Interact now by emailing instructor at USAprepares.com or text at 417-200-4715. Class, please take your seats. Now, your instructors, Vincent Finelli and Mark Wright. Thank you for listening to USA Prepares on KWTO 560 AM, the talk of the Ozarks. I'm Mark Wright. I'm here with the original survival economist, Vincent Finelli. And today, you, you know, Vinny, USA Prepares is where converging threats are confronted daily. Every day. And we are confronting the converging threat of this bad economy. And who better in the world to speak with about this economy than our very own regular Tuesday guest, Bob Chapman. I couldn't say it better. Welcome, Bob Chapman. It's great to have you on the radio. Well, thank you, and it's great to be here again. Another exciting week across the world. This is a pretty exciting week, Bob. You know, we hear we hear a lot about the debt ceiling, and we hear that uh, this is a really serious issue. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts on what is the debt ceiling? Can you give an overview, a thumbnail to our class, what the deal, debt ceiling is, and should we be concerned? Well, we should definitely be concerned because of the deficit itself. Actually, it's a short-term deficit, and when you reach the next uh, high watermark, we'll call it, uh, then another decision has to be made if you want to extend to get more debt. And the debt is $14.3 trillion. They want to increase it to $16.7 trillion that would have carried them through the next election. And it's not something politicians like to deal with when they're running or rerunning for office. And so uh, the seriousness of it is that it's a disrupt disruptive thing, but the government's got plenty of money on hand, money coming in for the day-to-day operations of the country. The president said, well, we might have to stop sending checks out like Social Security and Medicare, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, he's not telling the truth. Yeah, That, that is not the case at all. Yeah, that's, that's and, what we said. We, we agree. And, and Mark Wright even called for the impeachment based on, on yeah, that's uh, correct. those terroristic and, threats. And the president is lying. And everybody knows it, but obviously anything goes in his world. And so this is not some street, street corner in Chicago uh, with some hoodlums. Uh, these are intelligent people who are running a country and have the lives of uh, 310 million people that they're responsible for. You know, Bob... Obviously, he doesn't care about that. No, And Bob, I'm not being partisan. Uh, if George Bush was in there, I'd say the same thing. If he was doing the same thing, and he was lying, as the current president is, and he was just as big a liar as this guy is, with that said. But uh, it's a disruption. Uh, they've already been, by their own admission, taking any extra funds that they need out of... Uh, the federal pension plan by not taking the monies that they're supposed to put in there but using them and paying them back later if they can and they've also been dipping into the general fund which is the social security uh, money that's coming in and um, that uh, those funds have been pilfered since June of 1935 I mean, when FDR got that passed, Social Security Act, 1934, and when it started, they started taking the money right away. It was broke from the outset. And all this song and dance about having Treasury securities that back it up, well, sure they exist, but they're not marketable. And the only one that can redeem them is a government that's broke. So it's something to think about. But anyway, it's political theater. They're all playing the game, and it's wrong. Uh, they've got everything disrupted. 
Uh, companies don't want to expand. They don't know what to do. And, you know, if they, don't, if they have to extend this thing like they're talking about to December, I mean, that would be dreadful. I mean, I the com- country economically could slow down terrifically, not knowing what they're going to do or if there's going to be a default. And well, hey, Bob. who would want to buy our securities, 20% of treasuries and agency securities are purchased by American citizens as well as foreigners. Well, with that hanging over the head, they're not going to buy anything, which means the Federal Reserve will have to buy more than 80% that they're buying now, which means there'll be more money created out of thin air, and that money will go into the economy causing grievous inflation. Well, Bob, I think that's exactly right. When this debt ceiling debate started many, many weeks ago, I said it on this radio program. It's a lie. They are not going to default these fiscal terrorist threats that Obama is waging against Congress by uh, threatening to withhold Social Security checks. It's, It's political theater, as you just stated, and today, to confirm that, FoxBusinessNews.com headline, Obama to banks. We're not defaulting. While officials from the Obama administration raised their rhetoric over the weekend about the possibility of a debt default if the debt ceiling isn't raised, they privately have been telling top executives at major U.S. banks that such an event won't happen. Of course that's what he's been telling them, Bob. I mean, it's a lie. It's political theater. They're trying to manipulate the Congress and and the American people to go further, further into debt so they can justify QE3 and all these other uh, debt uh, schemes that they have cooked up. Well, you're right about that. You know, I had the same conversation on the largest radio station in uh, Greece this morning out of Athens. And uh, I had a similar conversation in Rio de Janeiro a little bit later. And uh, people are saying the same thing that you are. Uh, What are these people thinking about? I mean, it's supposed to be uh, one of the leaders, if not the leader of the world. And they're pulling shenanigans like this? No, I don't don't think that's such a a good idea. And so it's going to lead into a blind alley, and they're going to have problems. Well, there's no doubt about that, Bob. Um, if you can hold right there, we need to take a brief break. This is Mark Wright and Vincent Finelli on USA Prepares on KWTO. We'll be right back with world-renowned economic forecaster Bob Chapman. This is USA Prepares. I'm Mark Wright. I'm here with Vincent Finelli on KWTO 560 AM, and we are speaking with international forecaster, economic trend forecaster Bob Chapman. And before we get back to Bob, Benny, we have to – Remind our audience, August 5th, we are going to have the USA Prepares VIP dinner with Westwood One's Jimbo Hannon. Jimbo will be broadcasting live at the fairgrounds on Thursday night, August 1st from uh, August 4th, excuse me, from 9 to midnight. And then on Friday from 530 to 730, we are going to have a big VIP dinner with all of our sponsors and VIP guests to the Get Prepared Expo. Vinny, you and I will be there. We'll be there. And we got to announce two winners. Okay, let's do it. Yesterday, I told you, you could email us from the usaprepares.com website, or you could Facebook us, and you would be put in a drawing. Okay, so if you want to do that and be eligible to win tomorrow's and tomorrow's program, do that right now. We have two winners from yesterday, Vera Rector. And also Janet Randall, they have got two two pair of tickets. That's awesome. So we got many more to, to give away each day throughout the remaining of the program. So if you want to come out to the fair with us, email us or go to Facebook and hit like. All right, Vinny, we're back with Bob. Wow, uh, it sounds like we're in a lot of trouble, Bob. Um, you know, according to the statistics I've seen, fifty eight percent of Americans have jobs right now. Does, does that seem right to you? Um, yeah, that, that's close. Um, and I don't know what they're using as their base. Uh, they're using numbers. And the question is, are they using, uh, the U6, which is a combination of U1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Right. Uh, are they subtracting the birth-death ratio? Uh, I don't know that. 
Um, hopefully they are. Uh, are they considering that Congress is considering having a chain to CPI, which really is an expansion of, um, of the, the, uh, the procedure of saying somebody goes into the supermarket and wants to buy steak and it's $4 a pound, and they say, no, I don't want to afford that, and I'll take ground round at $2 a pound, and all of a sudden government says, well, that's a 50% savings. Yeah, great well, of news. Course it, of course it isn't. You're right, right, because it's they're not buying the steak. Hedonics. Right. And, and they want to do more of that. They want to falsify the figures further. Now the question is, going back to the 58%, what are they including, what are they not including? I don't know. Um, I just can't tell. Well, here's the point. Bob, as I look around, as I drive around, as I meet people, I don't see very many people that are excited about the economy. And I, I actually don't know a single young person who is flush with cash, not one. They, they can't afford gasoline to go anywhere. I mean, literally, if, if we gave them free tickets to come see us at the expo, uh, they couldn't drive there because they don't have the gasoline to get there. And I'm not kidding. It's that bad for young people. Are you hearing that uh, on the other uh, programs that you do also? Oh, sure. And, you know, uh, we can even throw in Europe and not Germany, but the rest of Europe. And in Spain, the 18 to 35-year-olds have a unemployment number of 43.5 percent now what that figure in america is i don't know i haven't seen a breakdown but it can't be far behind it just isn't anything out there and, oh. you know i get letters from people what do i do what do i do and i tell them i i don't have the answer for everything i only can do what i can do but it's very very serious and um i don't know which program i was on last week but somebody called in and said, I wanted to get a job in this company. I've been unemployed for five years. I have a master's. I think it was in accounting. So he went to the company, and he paid them. No, he worked for no pay to run a forklift. And then he got a job running a forklift, at a piping and plumbing company. And out of 27 people, I hired him, not because he had a master's. And uh, then they said to him, we're going to have an opening in our accounting apartment in a year and a half. Um, you know, maybe you can fill that. Now, this is somebody who used imagination, ingenuity. He, uh, he went out and did things other people wouldn't do. So don't sit home, you know, saying, woe is me, uh, use your mind, get out of the box, get out there and go to an employer and say, look, what do you pay for this job? And the guy says, well, $14 an hour. Well, if, 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 can you try me out at 10 bucks an hour? I mean, anything to try to get work. Bob, what I used to tell my students uh, back in the early 1990s, I would say, when you're applying for a job, why don't you try this? No one else does this. Go to the employer and make sure you research what that employer does. And don't, don't just say, I want a job, because that won't work. But find out about the employer. Find out what they do and find out what you can contribute. And then say, what I'd like to do is volunteer to work for you for a month at no charge. Let's see if we like each other. Let's see how well I work out. Let's, let's just see how it works. And at the end of the month, we can talk about it. And it always worked because that person would become a known quantity. Their skills would be would be known by the employer, and the employer would say, "You know what? This guy really is a good guy. There's no reason why I shouldn't hire him." And it always worked, Bob. So that's exactly what you were talking about. And so we're on the same page with this. And and class, why don't you try that? Why don't you go to an employer and ask them if you could volunteer to help? Uh, no strings attached. And, and see if you can learn what, what the, that company wants to, uh, to hire you for and do it and be the best at it on the planet. 